So let's start firstly with addition. So what do I mean with the word addition? With the word addition, I mean that I am adding more information. So I give a sentence and then I add more information about that sentence or about the topic or something along those lines. So here are some words here. Do take out a pen and piece of paper and do start taking notes, all right? You will need to take notes for this lesson because there's a lot to go through. So addition, here are some really common words and phrases that you might come across. These are not all the phrases for addition, okay? There are loads of them. I've just chosen some really common ones that I personally use or that I read a lot, okay? They're the most useful ones in my opinion, though there may be other useful ones too. So addition, we have moreover, also, plus, in addition, additionally, furthermore, as well as, okay? So lots there. Let's have a look at how we use them in sentences. So let's start with the first one, moreover. So what I've done is I've taken the same sentence and then you can see how I've just literally changed the connective. That's all I've done. So they can be used in exactly the same way. And this will help you remember, okay? Because sometimes connectives appear at the beginning, sometimes in the middle, and sometimes at the end of sentences. Sometimes they can also move, all right? So they can appear in the middle or at the beginning, or at the beginning and at the end, and so on. These here, let's have a look, all appear at the beginning of a sentence, but they must go in between two sentences which are relevant to each other. For example, the company's profits seem to be decreasing. Full stop. Moreover, comma. The staff's morale has also started to decline. So notice that even though I'm using moreover in the middle of the sentence, I'm separating the two sentences with a full stop. So I have the company's profits seem to be decreasing, full stop. Moreover, now I'm connecting, comma. That comma is important. If you don't use the comma, it's incorrect. You must use the comma afterwards. Same with also. The company's profits seem to be decreasing, full stop. Also, comma. The staff's, the staff's, <laughs> the staff's morale has also started to decline. Plus works exactly the same way. Plus, comma, the staff's morale has started to decline. In addition, works exactly the same way. In addition, comma, the staff's morale has also started to decline. So you see here, we can use them all in the same way. Here though, mm, it does start to change a little bit with as well as, but we'll get to that. Additionally and furthermore work in the same way as the ones that we've just looked at. All right, so here we have additionally, the company's profits seem to be decreasing, full stop. Additionally, comma, the staff's morale, da 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 da. Okay, so I'm adding more information related to that first sentence. Exactly the same as these ones, it works in the exact same way. Furthermore, works in the same way too. The company's profits seem to be decreasing, full stop. Furthermore, comma, da 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 da. Okay, you get the idea now, right? However, as well as changes a little bit. It's not necessary now to have the full stop to separate those two sentences, okay? We don't need the full stop and we don't need to use as well as, comma, and then the second sentence. We don't need to do that. With this one, we just put it in the middle of the two sentences, okay? So here I could say, the company's profits seem to be decreasing as well as the staff's morale, okay? Now this time I haven't repeated as well as the staff's morale has also started to decline, okay? I don't need to repeat that part. It's not necessary because I'm also kind of piggybacking <laughs> off this decreasing here, all right? So the staff's morale, yeah, here I use decline. Simply just do not repeat decrease, all right? Here I've got staff's morale 
But instead of repeating, which is kind of what I've done here because it's a new sentence, I've just removed it because I'm continuing on from the decreasing from the first clause there. Does that make sense? I hope it does. <laughs> Any questions as we're going along? So someone's asked about moral or morale. Moral is different to morale, okay? Oh, I have written moral though. <laughs> Never mind, I will correct that later. Anyway, should have any morale. Well spotted, thank you. So morale is the, how would you define morale? The staff's morale. It's like their enthusiasm, their willingness, okay? Are they willing to, to fight? <laughs> Are they willing to work? That's morale. I'll correct the other ones as well later on because I will leave this in the, in the description below for you to download. So yes, all of these have an E on the end, morale. The next one that I want to look at is compare and contrast, all right? So here are some other ones we have. Although, despite, despite the fact that, in spite of, in spite of the fact that, despite this, nevertheless, nonetheless, however, there's more, on the other hand, in contrast, on the contrary, conversely or conversely, whereas, while and though. So a lot here for compare and contrast. Let's have a look at them here. So we have although. With although, we tend to use it at the beginning. Although the weather was freezing, comma, I still decided to do some gardening. So I've got two parts here, two sentences or two clauses, okay? The weather was freezing, I still decided to do some gardening. So simply, you could just say, the weather was freezing, but I still decided to do some gardening. That's a bit boring, and I think many of you watching know how to use but, but many of you may not know how to use although. Although goes at the beginning, all right? Although the weather is freezing, comma, I still decided to do some gardening. Now, despite and in spite of tend to get confused quite a bit. There's really no difference in terms of use between them. So here, if I just read this first sentence, mm -mm -mm -mm, trying to highlight it, but my computer's a bit slow. All right, so this one here, despite the weather being freezing. Now, I really want to focus on this part here because what happens, guys, I'm bringing my microphone closer to make sure you hear this. When people use despite and in spite of, they forget that the verb here changes to ing. So I don't say, despite the weather was freezing, ooh, that's was, <laughs> despite the weather was freezing, no, no. Despite the weather being, all right? Despite the weather, ing. The same with in spite of here. Despite, sorry, in spite of the weather being freezing works in exactly the same way. You must use ing with despite and in spite of. Now what happens is that people get a bit confused when they start saying despite that, all right? I've seen students, they write, despite that the weather was freezing. Mm, we understand, but it's not correct. If you want to say despite that, you have to use the fact. Despact, despact, <laughs> I'm confusing despite and fact. Despite the fact that the weather was freezing. Now look what's happened. What has happened to the verb? It is no longer ing. So if I use despite, I use ing. If I use despite the fact that, I just use the normal verb. There's no ing. And this part stays exactly the same, okay? Exactly the same with in spite of. In spite of the weather being freezing, in spite of the fact that the weather was freezing, again, goes back to the normal verb if I use in spite of the fact that, 
all right? And never ever, in spite of that, the weather was freezing, doesn't work, all right? So, let me add that little part again. Last one is despite this. Now, despite this works slightly differently. You put it in between your two clauses normally. So you have your first sentence, you put it in between two sentences, I mean, not two clauses. You take your first sentence, the weather was freezing, full stop. Despite this, comma, I still decided to do some gardening. So the meaning is exactly the same as despite and in spite of, but despite this works in a slightly different way. We put it in the middle of those two sentences, okay? We take the first sentence, full stop. Despite this, comma, second part, all right? The next one, I see people are so quiet in the comments. Are you all writing things down? <laughs> um, compare and contrast, continuing with this one, we have nevertheless, Nevertheless, you have your first sentence, full stop, nevertheless, comma, second sentence, all right? However is a very common one. Nevertheless and nonetheless are used in the same way as however, but nevertheless and nonetheless are a bit more formal. So if you're talking about um, an academic essay or a formal letter of some kind, then you're more likely to use nonetheless and nevertheless. Okay, that doesn't mean that however is informal, it's quite neutral, but I would say that nonetheless and nevertheless are more formal, definitely. So just to look at the structure here, the weather was freezing, full stop, nevertheless, comma, I still decided to do some gardening, nonetheless, comma, I still decided to do some gardening, however, comma, da 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 da. You see, works in exactly the same way and they have the same meaning. A couple more. So here we've got, on the other hand. So you've got, on the one hand, da 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 da, on the other hand, da 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 da. So you can also use this as two parts. Let me just add it here. <coughs> so on the one hand, that's also possible. On the one hand, it's a great idea that the town have decided to build more homes. Full stop. On the other hand, comma, many wild animals will lose their homes because of this. That's also possible. I'm going to leave that in there actually for the document. So yeah, that's that. But it's not necessary. This part here is optional. You can remove it. It's fine. In contrast goes at the beginning. In contrast to the company's disappointingly low figures last year, comma, profits have increased dramatically this year. So you see, I'm just showing a contrast with this one. It's a very simple one. On the contrary, this goes in the middle of the two sentences. I decided to reject his offer, full stop. On the contrary, comma, John decided to accept it. Conversely is slightly different. I decided to reject his offer, comma, while John, comma, conversely, comma, decided to accept it. Okay, that's also possible. Couple more, we compare and contrast. If you have any questions, do let me know. Um, I will have a look after this if you have written some questions. So some more with compare and contrast before we look at cause and effect. So we've got, whereas, I decided to reject his offer, comma, whereas John decided to accept it, goes in the middle. While, on the other hand, can move. It's a special one, okay? While can go in the middle, or while can go at the beginning. But you'll see that the sentences are swapped round. So we've got here, with this one, I decided to reject his offer, okay? While John decided to accept it. While I decided to reject his offer, John decided to accept it. Okay, though is one of those which uh, I get a lot of questions about though because English people say it all the time. What are you doing though? Uh, I don't know though. Da -da 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 though. Da -da -da though. We use though all the time. All right, and a lot of students say to me, Emma, what does though mean? It's like however, 
but the only difference is it goes at the end. I decided to reject his offer, full stop. John decided to accept it though, so it goes at the end there. And that's why English people use it all the time, because <laughs> it's one of those lazy words that just sit at the end, okay? <laughs> um, any questions so far? <coughs> also gives me a chance to cough. <laughs> If I want to use despite or in spite of, does it matter what tense it's in? Nope, it doesn't matter what tense it's in, K2. Being and freezing, always use ing. No, Esther, it just depends on uh, the structure of despite and in spite of, okay? So if you're using in spite and despite, you can go back and watch the replay on that part, but you'll see that we use ing with despite being cold, despite being freezing, despite being blue, despite being whatever, okay? It's the verb, okay? It's the verb that changes. Freezing is an adjective. It's not a verb in, the, in that case that I showed you earlier. Be, being, was the verb. Freezing was an adjective. Um, please save the video. Is it gonna be saved? Yes, it'll be saved forever and ever. Don't worry. Um, so Hugo says, I lost all my fingers on one hand yesterday, but on the other hand, I'm okay. Very good use. <laughs> well done, Hugo. Okay, some cause and effect. We're getting towards the end here. So if you do have any questions, I'll answer them after the cause and effect part. So cause and effect. We have since, as, because, therefore, for this reason, as a result. Since, this goes at the beginning. So I would say, since the company, it's like using because. Because the company is doing so well this month, works the same, yeah? Since the company is doing so well this month, the staff should be rewarded with a Christmas bonus. As, works the same as because. Exactly the same. As the company is doing so well this month, da 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 da. Or, I can put it in the middle, the staff should be rewarded with a Christmas bonus as the company is doing so well this month. So you see, I've just basically switched the sentences round. As the company is doing so well this month at the beginning, or as the company is doing so well this month at the end. Works exactly the same as because. Because the company is doing so well this month, da 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 da. The staff should be rewarded with a Christmas bonus because the company is doing so well this month. No difference in meaning, no difference in usage. They work the same way. A couple of others. So we have, therefore, um, the company is doing so well this month, full stop this time. Therefore, comma, the staff should be rewarded with a Christmas bonus. So this goes in between the sentences and there must be a full stop and a comma around that therefore. Exactly the same with for this reason and as a result. For this reason, comma, the staff should be rewarded. As a result, comma, the staff should be rewarded. Works exactly the same way. It's brilliant. <laughs> Super easy. Now here, I've got a section on order and sequence. Now I've not given any examples for these ones because all of these would go at the start of a sentence or a paragraph. So I would literally just be copying the same sentence, all right? And just changing the first one. Nothing changes. So if you're structuring your essay or your text and you want to lead from one part to the next and you want to say that this is the first point, you would start with, firstly, da 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 da, the rest of your sentence. <coughs> Make sure though that you use a comma after them, okay? So you've got firstly, comma, da 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 da, Second, comma, da 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 da. Third, comma, da 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 da. My advice will also be that if you start using first, second, third, keep with that. If you start with firstly, secondly, thirdly, keep with that. Don't use first, secondly, third. Okay, don't mix them. It looks a little bit weird. <laughs> be consistent. First, second, third, or Firstly, secondly, thirdly. You could also start your first paragraph with first of all. With your next paragraphs, you could use next, then. 
I would say then is more informal. Then would be maybe if you're talking or writing informally. I wouldn't use this in anything formal, okay? Finally, for your final paragraph, not for your concluding paragraph. I'm going to come to that one in a moment. Finally, and then previously. So previously, of course, you maybe want to mention something that you said earlier, so you can use previously. And remember, you say previously, comma, da-da-da-da-da.